Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we are continuing our Getting Started in Electronics series and in this episode we are going to switch things up a little bit. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're continuing our Getting Started in Electronic series with the Elegoo Super Starter Kit for UNO, and in this episode we're going to see how to read and react to digital inputs using code, and we'll be bringing these little devices into the mix. What? You might be thinking, along with LEDs, we're going to work with some of these? Well, that's a switch. Yes, yes it is. A momentary push-button switch, to be precise. And since we're going to be using switches in this episode, let's talk about them for a little bit. These are known as normally open, momentary push-button switches. The normally open part means that when they're minding their own business, the switch is in the off position. The circuit is open. When the button is pressed, it's in the on position and the circuit is closed. But as soon as you let go of the button, it springs back into the off position, and that's what makes them momentary. They're only on for a moment. Another kind of switch is the normally closed kind. These are on when nothing is pressing them, and off when something is. Like the switch for the light in your refrigerator. When you open the door, it's not pressing the switch's button any longer, and the switch springs into the on position, and glorious illumination fills your refrigerator. In addition to momentary types, there are push-on, push-off switches, and toggle switches, and probably a few other types that aren't coming to mind just now. Yes, the electronics industry has a wide variety of switches, perfect for any occasion. Should I shut up about switches? Sorry for running on. Hope that didn't turn you off. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to connect two of these switches to the UNO and use them to control an LED. We'll use one switch as the on button and one switch as the off button, and we'll do that in code. So let's gather up the parts that we need for this lesson. We are going to need the Elegoo Uno and the breadboard. A single color LED, your choice of color, from the kit. A 220 ohm resistor. The two push buttons. And wires to connect all the parts. So back to these switches. You'll notice they have four pins on them, two sticking out from each side. Now four pins on a switch can be a little confusing, so let's break down what the pins do. Starting from the front left corner, let's name these pins A, B, C, and D. Left to right, the pins are connected internally, but front to back, they're only connected when the button is pressed. So pins A and D are always connected, and pins B and C are always connected, but the A and D pair are only connected to the B and C pair when the button is pressed. We're only going to use one side of these switches, but it's useful to know how they're connected internally. Now let's go ahead and get this circuit plugged together, and then we can work on the code. And since we have a few things that need to connect to ground, or the minus side of things, let's make use of the minus rail on the breadboard. Use a black wire to connect the ground pin on the UNO to the minus rail on the breadboard. Plug the LED into the breadboard, and then connect the 220 ohm resistor from the LED's cathode lead, that's the shorter one, and also the one on the side of the LED with the flat spot on the flange to the minus rail. Connect the LED's anode lead, the longer one, to pin 5 on the UNO, and I'm using a red wire for this. Plug the two switches into the breadboard like this. You want the pins on the switch straddling the groove running down the middle of the breadboard. I found it easier to straighten the pins on the switches using needle nose pliers. Connect one pin on each switch to the minus rail. I'm using black wires for this. Connect the other pin on the side of one switch to pin 8 on the UNO. And do the same for the other switch, connecting it to pin 9 on the UNO. And I'm using yellow wires for this. I find that this helps using a color code for the wires. We're using the traditional red for positive voltage and black for ground. And then I chose to use yellow for the switch inputs. That way, when I look at the breadboard, I can tell at a glance what's what. If I have to troubleshoot, I can see where my power leads are, so I can verify that they're going to voltage and ground. Okay, so that's it for the wiring. Now, onto the code. And the code for this is super simple, so we'll just type it in. Let's open up the Arduino IDE. 
Remember, it usually opens the sketches that you were working on when you last got out of it. So you may have one or more sketches open when you get back into it. And if that's the case, you can close them to get them out of your way. Make a new sketch by clicking File and then clicking New. You'll get a new sketch which contains the void setup and the void loop functions ready to accept your code. Let's add a couple of lines of code before the setup function. We're going to define some variables to represent the pins that we've connected to the LED and the switches. Pin numbers are integers. That is, they're whole numbers, not decimal or fractional numbers. There's no such thing as pin eight and a half. So we need to set these variables as integer variables. Now we'll need a pin for our LED. We've got this connected to pin five on the Uno. So let's type int LED pin equals five semicolon. Next, we need a pin for our on button. This is connected to pin nine. So let's type int button on pin equals nine semicolon. And finally, we need a pin for our off button. This is connected to pin eight. So let's type int button off pin equals eight semicolon. Now remember the Arduino IDE is picky about punctuation. So make sure you end each of those lines with a semicolon. Great, okay, now we need to put some code in the setup function. We've got to tell the UNO which pins are outputs and which pins are inputs. Let's do the LED pin first. Type pin mode, open parenthesis, LED pin, comma, output, close parenthesis, semicolon. And note that pin mode has a capital M in the middle of it. The Arduino IDE is very, very picky about capitalization too. So make sure that pin mode has that capital M LED pin matches what you typed earlier, and output is in all caps. And don't forget the semicolon at the end of the line. Next, we need to set up our button pins. So type pin mode, open parenthesis, button on pin, comma, input, underscore, pull up, close parenthesis, semicolon. And pin mode, open parenthesis, button off pin, input, underscore, pull up, close parenthesis, and semicolon. Now, you might have expected that we would have set these as just input rather than input pull up, but we didn't, and here's why. One side of these switches is connected to an UNO pin, and one side is connected to ground. When the switch button is pressed, the UNO pin is connected to ground, and the UNO can read that as a low signal. But when the switch button is not pressed, the UNO pin is, electrically speaking, not connected to anything, it's just floating out there. And the value that the UNO reads from that pin might be a high signal or it might be a low signal. There's no way to know what it could be. And so you could have very unpredictable results. The LED might be turning off and on for no discernible reason. The way around this is to provide a high signal to that pin when the switch button isn't being pressed. But you don't want to just directly connect the five volt line to that pin. If you did, what would happen when you press the switch button? You'd be connecting five volt and ground lines, creating a short circuit across the UNO's power supply. At a minimum, the UNO would reset and you could potentially damage the power supply. So how do we get a high signal to that pin in a safe way? Well, we'll connect it to five volts, but we'll do it through a resistor. When we use a resistor this way, it's called a pull-up resistor because it's used to pull that pin up to five volts. Now this is a safe way to do it because the resistor acts as a load on the circuit instead of directly connecting positive voltage to ground. Fortunately, because this is actually quite a common thing, the UNO has the built-in ability to do exactly this internally. So that's where the input underscore pull-up comes from. We're specifying that these pins are inputs and we want the UNO to use an internal pull-up resistor to force them high when they're not being set low by the switch button. Okay, that's all for the setup function. Now let's get into the loop function. This is the code that the UNO will be running for the rest of its lifetime, or until you load another sketch. In the loop function, we're going to read the switch inputs and then decide whether to turn the LED on or off. We want to turn it on if the on button has been pressed and turn it off if the off button has been pressed. Let's handle the on condition first. Type if, open parenthesis, digital read, open parenthesis, button on pin, close parenthesis, equals, equals, low, close parenthesis, and press return. Then type an open curly brace and press return again. The IDE will automatically add the closing curly brace. Now type digital write, open parenthesis, LED pin, comma, high, close parenthesis, and a semicolon. 
And with this code, what we're saying is, if the on pin is low, meaning the button has been pressed and that pin is connected to ground, turn the LED on. Now, we need to handle the off condition, and the code is nearly the same. Let's go down below that closing curly brace and add a couple of blank lines. Then, type if, open parenthesis, digital read, open parenthesis, button off pin, close parenthesis, equals equals low, close parenthesis, and press return. Then, type an open curly brace and press return again, and again, the IDE automatically inserts the closing curly brace for us. Then, type digital write, open parenthesis, LED pin, comma, low, close parenthesis, and a semicolon. And here, what we're saying is, if the off button is pressed, we want to turn off the LED. And that's it for the code. Now, let's save the sketch. Click File, then click Save, and give it a name. I'll just call it Buttons. Now we can check for errors. Click the check mark button on the toolbar at the top of the sketch. Most of the time your errors are going to be related to capitalization or missing semicolons at the ends of lines. So if any errors are reported, correct them. After correcting any errors, it's time to get the code over to the UNO. Plug your USB cable into the UNO and then plug the other side of it into your computer. In the IDE, click Tools and then Board to make sure you have the Arduino Uno selected. And then check Tools and Port to make sure that you've selected the port that the Uno is connected to. Then click the Upload button. It's the one with the right arrow in the circle to send the sketch to the Uno. It should only take a second or two to send. When the IDE says that it's done uploading, we can try the buttons to see if they're doing what we want. And here we go. The on button is turning the LED on, and the off button is turning the LED off. But what do you think happens if you press both buttons at the same time? Well, let's try it and see. Ah, the LED dims, but do you know why? Well, remember that episode where we used PWM, Pulse Width Modulation, to adjust the brightness of the LEDs? PWM works by turning an output on and off really fast to simulate a lower brightness level. Yep. The code is going to see that on button and turn the LED on, and then immediately see the off button and turn the LED off. And it's going to keep doing that over and over again, so the LED appears dimmer. So that's how you can read digital inputs and do useful things based on the results. If you want to explore more on your own, you could add another button or two and program them to control the LED with high, medium, low, and off settings. Now to pull that off, you'll use some of the skills that you learned in the PWM lesson to set the LED brightness based on which button is pressed. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Now, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing or electronic stuff. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help out, check the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying, and heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, now that I'm able to turn this LED on and off again, I'm going to see what else I can make it do. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.